Hello boys and girls, welcome to part 6 of the EJ25 build. In today's video, I'm gonna take care of some miscellaneous uh, different uh, parts that go around the block, uh, camshaft sensors, AVS, AVCS sensors, uh, what else? Oil pressure sensor, other little stuff, and all the different timing components, tensioner, pulleys, and the timing belt, adjusting it and all that stuff so as always if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button subscribe and thanks for watching now oil seals using this big ass 33 mil socket i'm gonna drive the oil seal with it just make sure it's the same size as the seal so you you hit this part the edge of the socket in this case is as near as possible to the edge of the seal. That's actually metal. And the outside part, well, all around, but you don't want to hit this piece, the actual seal. So a little bit of oil, as usual. Outside and inside. There are two different seals. The ones with the bigger opening are for the intake cams. The ones with the smaller are for the exhaust. Okay, I keep taking it out and checking. I don't want to go in too deep. I want to be with the flush with the outside surface here of the head so I am flush here on, on the left side almost but since these surfaces there is a kind of sharp edge right here so these two are not even with each other so it is flush here on this side but it's not it's a tiny bit sticking out on this side I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, now these coolant pipes again a bit of oil on the water pump these are 10 mil bolts only two huh. check this out since the head and the block were decked now there is not enough room see this doesn't line up i mean barely but still so i'm just gonna bend this pipe bend them closer together actually there's three. Third one goes here Now this, this pipe here, this one goes to the throttle body, so I'm probably either connected with the inlet or outlet, being this the inlet or outlet, bypassing the throttle body altogether, or cap it right here, but I'm, I'm going to leave it for now. And now the dipstick tube, new o-rings, both of them, and oil. You will not get far without oil on these. In fact, I'm going to put some more. So that took a little bit, be patient, don't force it, you're going to destroy the o-ring and stop when 
the bracket touches the head where the bolt goes. stop a bit I need to I need to loosen up the 10 mil let's take it out completely and see if this cover will fit without taking the dipstick the dipstick tube out probably not okay so all of that for nothing yep because the head was decked and the black, I got less room. These moved closer to the black. I'm just gonna have to force it. Or take this bracket off. That's what I'm gonna do. There we go. So yeah, dipstick tube, cover, then the bracket. Learn from my mistakes. Anyways, I have two different bolts. There's only one of this kind with this little, I don't know, whatever you want to call that. And that does not go in here. These regular ones go in here. Looks like this might go right in here. Okay, now the passenger side cover. I did replace these dust seals on the back of the cover. Alright, now the exhaust cam sprockets. You got two of them, they are quite different. You can't really mess this up. And I just almost did. This one goes here, and this one goes here. Now, obviously, I got I clean these in and out, but make sure there is no dirt or any debris on the inside where the sprocket meets with the cam same thing on the cam and this is clean free of oil any any lubrication whatever you want to clean this thoroughly i, I sprayed that um not that would be for i sprayed brake cleaner on this and used compressed air you don't want to get any oil any dirt on your timing belt These get these shorter bolts. The intake sprockets get these longer ones with these uh, oil passages in them. This is just a regular bolt. Check this out. This is the this is a new one I had to get. Remember this? Any of you have seen the um, episode one of the engine uh, disassembly or teardown? This is what I had to do to take this one out. It was a trip. Something to see. Check it out. I'm going to keep this as a souvenir. 10 mil. When I was turning the uh, crankshaft and I made the pistons stop, all of them more or less in the middle, it is okay to turn the cams. Well, I mean, you're not going to be able to turn them by hand because the valve springs are stronger than, you know, your hand. But it's safe to... Uh, turn it either way even if you were to use a tool and overturn it the valves will not hit the pistons okay the torque on these is 22 foot pounds of torque on all of them all, all four intake and exhaust but i'm not going to do it now i'm not going to torque them now and then it's 45 degrees so 22 and then 45 degrees from here to here now wait a minute that's 90 so 45 would be here 
that's 90 so in be halfway through 90 so right about here but I'm gonna do that once the everything here is on the the pulleys and the tensioner the belt it's just gonna be easier this is gonna stay in place it's gonna be easier for me to put this special tool on and to hold it in place and torque it intake sprockets new o-rings so another mistake this line goes behind the timing cover so I gotta take these sprockets off take the timing cover off and then put the line in turns out this should probably fit now this one of these bolts has a filter inside it does look different let me show you see the filter there I did clean the inside I sprayed brake cleaner from here and now I can actually see through it to the light I don't know if you see that or not but yeah now it's nice and clean so this this one goes right in here right in front of the engine okay make sure you new put new crush washer crush washers okay this one is just a regular bolt with a passage inside through for this oil line the torque on these is 20 1.4 I'll just do 22 but now it looks like I'm gonna to have to take this cover off to torque it properly yep that's what I'm gonna to have to do learn from my mistakes let's see if I can get away without removing this bracket remember I had to remove this bracket to put the cover in let's see if I can somehow get away with that maybe I can just yep okay all right, so that's a 17. All right. And now the oil flow control solenoid valve. I'm reusing these o-rings these look pretty good I did not get these in my gasket set but they are the rubber is pretty soft and I cleaned it I took those out cleaned them up and I put fresh oil on the o-rings so this is the driver's side there we go torque on these is 5.9 I just didn't bother camshaft sensors one on each side again reusing these o-rings these also didn't come with my set make sure it pops in don't for even if you you know when you you got to put oil on the o-rings if you don't you're just gonna mess up the uh, damage the o-ring but even if with oil do not force these in play around twist it left and right until it pops in on its own you know what now on second thought I'm gonna clean up these bolts oil filler tube new o-ring
All right, right here you have your oil sending unit, or oil pressure sensor, and no glue or no RTV, nothing is required because these threads are tapered. Okay, so it kind of it seals its itself up. I mean, you could put some RTV, tiny bit on here just to be safe, but I don't think that's necessary. Torque on this, on the oil pressure switch. So many different names for the same thing is 18.4 I'm just gonna do 19 or close to it so I've been torquing it and torquing it to tell you the truth 19 seems excessive I found more info online they're asking for 17 foot-pounds of torque I'm at 14 right now 15 it looks like it's doable I think that's enough and what I've noticed on my, because remember this is an 08 WRX uh, block, which is basically the same thing. And on mine, the um, the provision for the sensor was right here, and this plug was here. So they switched it in 08 or maybe in 07. But yeah, it used to be here. Now it's going to be here. That's fine with me. Okay, let's take care of the knock sensor. No oil, nothing, no no washers, just a sensor and a bolt. Looks like a 12 mil. And you want to position it the same way, which I've noticed it's almost always about 10 o'clock. So the torque spec is 17.4. And you want to be precise for this, for the knock sensor. Should be good. All right, we're getting somewhere with this. All right, another oil line. The top bolt is your regular bolt. And the one that goes on the back, it's got that filter, that uh, inside filter, which I cleaned as well. Torque on these is, again, 21.4. Crankshaft sensor. All right, let's take care of the timing components. This should be fun. Now, it looks like at least this bolt had uh, some kind of glue on it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put blue glue, which is the weaker stuff. And this little guy goes right here. These are, of course, all new, all new pulleys. The tensioner gets a washer and a little o-ring on the back. All right, this bolt, it's pretty clean. I'm not gonna put any glue on this one. This one goes here. So these two so far are 14s. This is a, or a, yeah, that's a 14. This is a 12. This one, I'm only, I'm only gonna put three threads in, not all the way. We'll see later why. So 18.1 and 28.9 on the rest of them. Which, yep, you guessed it. I'm gonna do 29. Oh yeah, not supposed to be tightening that one. And now the crank sprocket. Make sure the keyway is is installed. Okay, you basically knock it in or knock it on. Line it up. And that's it. Make sure all the surfaces of the pulleys are clean, free of oil. Like I mentioned before, you don't want to get any oil on your belt. I did spray brake cleaner on the sprockets. It would be hard to, you know, or take time too long to wipe them off. Now I'm actually gonna clean my hands before I handle the belt. I'm gonna install the crank bolt. Let's see if I can turn it by hand. Oh, no way. So there's a little notch right here. You wanna line it up. Actually, you know the notch. Never mind. The notch on the sprocket is here. Ok, 
Okay, so the sprockets on the driver's side, you want to line up the double lines on the sprocket. Okay, we're going to need more power. All right, so now the springs are starting to work. Okay, that's as far as this goes. Now, I don't have any locking tools, so this may be a bit more difficult than usual. But basically, there's a notch here, so that's you line that up, this part of the sprocket, with the notch on top. These two double lines, they gotta be right here, and then this single notch needs to be with the notch on the cover, right about here. So let's, let's try and do that right now. Yeah, that's not gonna stay. Well, Sometimes it does stay on the, on its own. Okay, there we go. It's a bit off, but we can fix it later. No, this will not stay. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the belt on. Now the way this, see it's got, this belt is cool because it's already got marks. Where to uh, put them on the sprockets and the crank sprocket. So these dotted lines will go on the crank sprocket. Okay, so I'm gonna go backwards. Let me show you what I mean. So there's a notch right here, and my line is right up here. I don't need the special tool to line this one up. Okay. Okay, so I haven't done this for a while. Anyways, the uh, passenger side looks like the valve springs are not uh, working yet. So this side is going to be easy. So it's just a matter of lining these lines up. Okay, you can see these two. And these two here, and these double lines are lined up. All right, moving on. See, I have, because this is so loose, I have that extra slack that I need. I can even leave it off for now. Okay. So really all that's left to line up is these two. I'm going to remove this pulley altogether. All right, that was easy. So it looks like, see, this one will line up. I'm not going to worry about this slack right now. Okay, I'm gonna hold this belt here. Touch the special tool. Actually, I have an idea. I'm gonna remove the tensioner just for that extra slack. There we go. It's actually easy enough doing this by hand. Okay, now the belt will hold this sprocket in place. Looks like that's still lined up. This is lined up, the double lines will meet together once we have the belt all tight. Yeah, this move a bit. I see there we go, that's what you want to watch out for. So let's do that again. Make 
actually what I'm going to do put this little clip right here so that doesn't come off we check my marks lined up lined up okay this this one jumped no actually it's okay uh, this glue is still wet reattach the tensioner all right looking around checking the marks again Everything seems to be good. Now it's time to install that last idler pulley. And this one is should be easy. Should be is the keyword. Oh wait, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm sure you saw that. You just didn't tell me. Okay, now it's time to install this pulley. I'm gonna push it up, remove the remaining slack, and this will go on easy. So this is the very last thing that you do. And torque is 29, or 28.9. All right, not done yet. Let's double check the markings. Okay, one, two, Three, four, five, six, and seven. And now it should be safe to spin the crank, spin the whole thing. So let's see what happens. Actually, before you start spinning, remove the pin for the tensioner. Because usually if you don't, the belt likes to skip because it doesn't have that proper tension on, on its own, on itself. So now we're going to spin the engine. That was a spring, which is okay. It's adjusting itself. That little click that you heard. Slowly we're going to turn the crank twice for the camshaft to turn once so that was one that's another valve spring and that's two I'm gonna line this up again okay I'm gonna check the marks okay so right here, that's lined up. Now we are ignoring the lines on the belt. That doesn't matter now. I would have to turn it a few more times for these to line up. We're only, only looking at the marks at the, on the uh, covers and on the sprockets. So that's lined up. These two are lined up. This with this notch on the cover, that's lined up. These two are, are lined up. These double lines. Oh, they're close and then this one with the notch here these are not gonna be to the millimeter okay but they will be close it's actually a good thing to spin the engine a few times just to make sure everything's fine it's better that you find out that there's something wrong spinning it slowly than when you're once than when you crank it so the plugs are not in yet, the spark plugs are not in yet. If they were in, then this would not be that easy to spin. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, in case you're wondering, you can remove these to make your life easier. Uh, the torque on these is 4.7, in case you're wondering. And there is a, a millimeter of clearance 
between these and the belt. There's one more thing that goes right here. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. 